Education and research in aeronautics are the main purpose of the Aeronautics Research Center NFL. More than 1,000 researchers are organized in 10 institutes of the TU Braunschweig, 5 institutes of the German Aerospace Center DLR and 1 institute of University of Hanover that are part of the Scientific Union NFL. Researchers as well as students benefit from the outstanding research infrastructure owned by the NFL members. For example, the real jet engine V2500 from the Airbus A320 is available for research and education. For instance, measurements are conducted to investigate wear mechanisms or reduction of noise emissions. With this testing capability, NFL is unique in German academia. For education and research purposes, an are available and can be used by students for their own projects. Also technologies of flight guidance and air traffic management are aspects of research. Students and researchers work together developing innovative cockpit interfaces. The new systems are tested using the A320 cockpit simulator also available at the NFL. Going one step further in the technology evolution, the new developments can be tested in flight trials. For this purpose, the research aircraft Dornia 128 offers an excellent opportunity and is also used as a flying classroom for students. In aeronautics as well as in aerospace, material research play a major role at NFL. Especially in applications with high thermal loads, Codings are required, for example in jet core engines or rocket nozzles. Another aspect of aerospace research is space debris. Here the members of NFL are leading with their simulation program MASTER, offering a simulation of potentially dangerous objects in orbit. Let's have a closer look on actual airplane development and especially on the engines. All our medium and large airliners today are driven by turbofan engines to allow high subsonic cruising speeds combined with a low fuel burn. During the last years almost all aircraft manufacturers decided to offer re-engined airplanes instead of completely new designs of these airplanes from scratch. This applies, for instance, to the new Boeing 737 MAX, as well as to the Airbus A320 NEO family and, very recently launched, to the Airbus A330 NEO family. Although all these airplanes are getting additional technologies like wingtips and improved um, aerodynamics, their basic design is not significantly changed since most of the improvement comes from the engine. A typical fuel burn reduction of such a new airplane compared to its predecessor is in the range of approximately 15 to 20 percent, which is by two-thirds of it realized by a complete new engine. To understand the basic mechanism, we have to look a little bit deeper into a turbofan engine. Here we have such an engine. The air enters through the intake into the engine once the airplane is cruising or flying. Internally, the air is divided into two mass flows. The first one, called the primary mass flow, is routed through the compressor into the combustion chamber and it's expanded through the turbine and leaving the engine here in this exit area, which is called the primary nozzle. The second mass flow, called the secondary mass flow, is just passing the fan and leaving the engine through this exit area, which is called the secondary nozzle. Looking to the engine as a black box, some very easy descriptions can be found, assuming some simplifications. The air enters the engine with a flight speed. On the level of a static pressure and with its mass flow. For the primary outlet, we can assume that the air is expanded to ambient pressure.
and it has the exit speed of UE. For the secondary outlet or the secondary mass flow, we can assume that also a complete expansion to ambient pressure is done. And we are using, we are assuming the same exhaust speed, UE. The overall efficiency of the engine can be described as a product out of propulsion efficiency and thermal efficiency of the internal Joule operating process. In other, word, in other words, this is the power of thrust divided by the power of fuel. This is the power of thrust divided by the power of the exhaust jet which is leaving the engine. And this is the power of this exhaust jet divided by the power of fuel. Focusing on the propulsion efficiency here and making use of the assumptions we have made, these can be described as two times the flight speed divided by the sum out of flight speed and exhaust velocity. And here you can see that our assumption using the same exhaust velocities for primary and secondary mass flow allows to use just this one formulation here instead of having two speeds. The other important formulation we need is a net thrust. For the net thrust, we are making use of the linear momentum equation in direction of flight. The result for the net thrust is the entire mass flow passing through the engine times the difference of our exit speed minus the flight speed. Using just these two equations, we can understand the driving mechanisms of re-engine airliners or airplanes. Taking the same aircraft, which means the same design flight mission, the same flight profile, the required amount of net thrust would stay the same. Using this and trying to increase the propulsion efficiency to a maximum would mean to lower the exhaust velocity to the flight speed. But of course that does not work because that would reduce the net thrust to zero. But the tendency of lower the exhaust speed is the right one. That means that we would decrease the exhaust speed in order to increase the propulsion efficiency as far as possible and accept the reduction of this formulation here and in order to get back the correct net thrust, we need to increase the mass flow. And the only way to increasing the mass flow is to increase the size of the engine because it means nothing else than increasing the diameter of the engine where the entire mass flow enters it. Very simple. But to make use of this effect, you have to use a turbofan engine with its two mass flows. If it was just a turbojet engine with only a core mass flow, it would have a high exhaust speed realized through a high thermal efficiency of the core. Only a secondary mass flow which bypasses the core and therefore the internal Joule process can be independently reduced in the exhaust speed. The ratio of both mass flows the secondary mass flow and the primary mass flow. This ratio is defined as the bypass ratio. It's the secondary mass flow divided by the primary mass flow and the sum of both is of course the total mass flow. Beside other parameters for describing the internal Joule process, 
which has pressure ratio, for instance, and turbine inlet temperature. This bypass ratio is one of the most important parameters to describe jet engine technologies and development trends.